Hello everyone! This week's video is a 500,000 subscriber special. I'm going to answer your questions and also do the meet the artist tag thing. I don't totally know what to call it. <laughs> I did this a few years ago and I thought it'd be fun to do an updated one. Also, I'm including my face in this video since it feels a little bit more personal, I guess. It feels like it's been a really long time since I've shown my face on camera, or at least sat down and talked in front of the camera. Quite a few people are asking if I would do a face reveal. Uh, they, they didn't know that I've done a face reveal before, uh, but if you've never seen my face, here's my face. <laughs> It's understandable that they wouldn't see it since it was a really long time ago. Uh, so yeah, I picked some questions to answer and I have them here on my iPad. But before we start, I want to say thank you for 500,000 subscribers. It's crazy that this channel has grown so much. Half a million people is a lot of people and it's kind of crazy how much this channel has grown. Thank you so much for encouraging me and your support. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Also for the art, I'll be drawing a chibi me instead of a normal sized me. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't feel like drawing me in my normal style for some reason. So I decided to go for a chibi version of myself and I thought that would be fun. So the first question is, how old are you? I am 24, almost 25. A lot of people think I'm younger. They always think I'm like 17 or 18. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> What is an art style you want to try? I wasn't sure what my answer was for this at first, but after filming this video and drawing the chibi version of me, I kind of want to try drawing more chibis because I don't draw them very much, so they might be fun to draw more of. How old were you when you started drawing? And what is your favorite anime series? I started drawing more seriously when I was 14. I had always kind of been drawing, but I got more into it when I was 14. My favorite anime is Haikyuu. I love it a lot. It's a sports volleyball anime and I really love the characters. <laughs> My sister has been watching it now, so now we both just keep fangirling over the characters. <laughs> Do you think your improvement would still be the same if you never did YouTube? I don't think it would be the same because being on YouTube and hearing your feedback and your advice and critiques have all really helped me grow as an artist. And it also helps me see things that maybe I wouldn't usually see. Also, being on YouTube and creating weekly videos requires me to do a lot of drawing. So, because of YouTube, I draw a lot more than I think I would if I had a normal job. I don't think my progress would be the same if I hadn't started YouTube. Uh, so, I'm happy I've been able to progress in my art. Are you going to come out with another comic after My Next Door Neighbors? If you don't know, I make a webcomic called My Next Door Neighbors and I post it here on YouTube. I've been moving the videos from this channel to its own channel and uh, so if you want to read it, I'll put a link to that channel in the description. I do have some ideas in my head that I'd like to work on, uh, but I think after My Next Door Neighbors ends, I want to take a little bit of break from making stories and maybe work on some other projects. But we'll see. I might finish My Next Door Neighbors and want to hop on to the next project. <laughs> What do you do in your free time? So every Sunday is kind of my day off that I give myself. And on that day, I usually clean, do my laundry, read some mangas if I have any new ones. I'm currently reading uh, Love Me, Love Me Not, Snow White with the Red Hair, and a few other series. I also play video games, usually Animal Crossing, but I've been playing Age of Calamity a ton. It's so much fun and I love anything Zelda related. I love all of the cutscenes and it's so much fun getting to see more Link and Zelda interaction. What do you feel when some of your fans compliment you and belittle themselves? How happy are you when many artists are so inspired by you? and why. When people compliment me but also belittle themselves in their comments, I never really know how to respond and I always feel kind of bad. Like they'll say something like, oh you draw so good but I draw so bad and I'll never do that. And I just want to be like, yes you can, you just need to practice and stuff. <laughs> it always makes me feel a little bad. <laughs> I almost do it sometimes too when I comment on other people's videos. I'll be like, wow, you do that so amazing. And if I tried doing that, it wouldn't look very good. But I try not to do that because I know it can be a hard comment to respond to. So instead I just compliment the YouTuber and I don't bring myself into it and my shoulder just popped. I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> As for other artists being inspired by me, I was talking about this to my sister the other day and it's kind of crazy to think about because I was looking at another artist's art on like YouTube 
or Instagram or something. And I was like, wow, that's so amazing. I want to do something like that. And it was really inspiring. And then it kind of hit me that sometimes other people feel that way about my art. And it's just kind of crazy to think about because to me, my art is just my art and it doesn't seem like it's that inspiring, but other people are inspired by it. Uh, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> What's your favorite snack food? Like chips, cookies, and so on? Okay, so there's this really yummy mix of chips that's kind of new. It's called Munchies, and it has Doritos, and Cheetos, and pretzels, and Sun Chips all mixed together, and it's super good. <laughs> Highly recommend. <laughs> I wanted to know what your first drawing program was, and if you recommend it. My first drawing program was Manga Studio 4 Debut and it's very outdated so i wouldn't recommend it now but the newer version manga studio 5 or uh, also known as clip studio paint is very nice and it's what i currently use uh, so i highly recommend that introduce us to something of your friends art friends or normal friends i just want to know i have no friends a lot of people think i'm joking when i say that but i'm not <laughs> And some people think it sounds lonely, but I have a lot of siblings and I'm really close with my family and I have all of you. So for an introvert like me, that's probably enough social interaction. <laughs> How do you keep your sanity when you are drawing? Drawing helps me keep my sanity, not lose it. Have you ever been in a relationship? Nope. The other night my mom and sister and I were watching a Hallmark movie and one character was trying to convince another character to get back out there and start dating again and they're like, come on, it's been two years. And my sister just looks over at me and goes, Becca, it's been 25 years. <laughs> what is it like to be the eldest sister in your family? If you don't know, I am the oldest of nine children and I'm 24 and the youngest is currently three. For the most part, I always enjoy being the oldest sibling because I'm kind of the boss and they have to do what I say for the most part. Uh, even though the, my brother that's right under me, he would hardly ever listen to me. <laughs> when I was younger, I didn't like being the oldest sometimes because it felt like my younger brother didn't have as much responsibilities. He could kind of do whatever he wanted, but I had to help out more. I don't really feel that way now because all of the kids are getting older and helping out more. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> if you have to do a collab slash challenge video with an animator slash artist YouTuber, who would it be? If I could collab with any YouTuber, I think I'd pick Drawing with Waffles or Mariah Elizabeth. I love both of their videos a lot. Uh, but their channels are way bigger than mine, so it probably never happened. <laughs> like 500,000 is a lot, but they have like a lot of subscribers. I also think Apple Mint would be fun to collab with. We're similar in size. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> After seeing that screenshot of Suho on your iPad, cough cough, and many BTS references in your sketchbook, cough cough, who is your bias and what is your favorite webtoon? Uh, my bias is V. I don't know. He's been my bias before I knew what a bias was. <laughs> And I don't know if I have a favorite webtoon just because I read so many and I like a lot of them. But one of my favorites right now is Your Smile is a Trap. It's so cute. Basically the story is about an idol that just wants to go to school normally and he doesn't really want to be an idol anymore. And so he wears these funny glasses that makes his eyes super small and he tries to conceal his handsomeness, I guess. <laughs> uh, but then there's this girl that sits next to him and she lets off like a, like a weird presence and everyone is scared of her because she looks super mean. But she's actually really, really nice and it's just kind of about them and stuff and it's really cute. Have you ever done realistic art and what are your thoughts on it? I have tried realistic art. I've drawn portraits of my mom and my dad. Uh, I won't show the one of my mom because I do feel like it kind of looks like my mom, but I'll show you the one of my dad because I don't think it looks like my dad. <laughs> so here you go. Uh, yeah, realistic art is really, really hard. <laughs> it took me so long to draw this and it was really tricky. Who is your favorite Haikyuu character? It's really hard to pick a favorite Haikyuu character. I love Sukawara, Kagiyama, Hinata, Tsukishima, uh, Akashi, Kenma, Kuro, Bokuto. I love so many of the characters. They're all so lovable. <laughs> Was it a difficult process to publish slash make your books? Uh, so if you don't know, I've published two books. My first book was I Want to Be a Magical Girl, and I published that a few years ago. It was the first manga I ever created from start to finish. And this year, I published a short light novel called The Autumn Festival. Uh, creating the books 
was kind of a hard process. It's a very long process of writing and creating the art. Uh, when it came to publishing for I Want to Be a Magical Girl, it was really tricky because I had no idea what I was doing and I was trying to figure out the formatting and the printing guidelines and all that stuff. Uh, so it was kind of tricky. However, publishing the Autumn Festival went really fast and I didn't have much trouble because I knew what I was doing and I learned a lot from the first time around. Also, I used KDP to publish my books if you're curious. Do you prefer drawing digitally or physically? For creating finished illustrations and working on stuff for YouTube and for creating comics, I prefer digital. It's really easy to make things neat and clean and how I want it. Uh, but when it comes to personal art for myself or when I'm just practicing, I prefer traditional art. I don't know. There's something nice about sitting down with my sketchbook and using actual art supplies. I didn't have a question at first, but now that I have bought your light novel, curiosity is eating me alive. So why does Tokume wear a mask? Is it because of tradition? Does he have a scar? Is he emo? <laughs> By the way, congrats on 500k. <laughs> thank you so much and thank you for buying my book. This is talking about my light novel. The main male character Tokume wears a mask and uh, it doesn't answer why he wears a mask in the book. And I'm really sorry I can't answer that. It is a part of the story and it can't be revealed till later on. Uh, so hopefully maybe someday I'll get to write more of their story. Are you self-taught or did you get lessons? A lot of people ask me if I've gone to art lessons or art classes or if I went to art school. I've never taken an art class. I was homeschooled and an art class was never one of the requirements when I went to college and I didn't go to college for art. I went for accounting. And I still don't know why I did that. <laughs> so I guess you would say I'm self-taught, but artists sharing things on YouTube and on Instagram and sharing what they've learned is also really helpful and was especially a big help to me when I was starting my art journey. I've heard a little about how you started drawing, but how did you get into creating stories? That's a really good question and I've never thought about it too much. I think I started getting into story creating and characters and stuff when I was about 12. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but back in the day, Nickelodeon had message boards and there was a message board where people could post their own stories. And I thought it was really neat that kids around my age were creating their own stories. And I thought they were really amazing at the time. Uh, so that kind of made me have more of an interest in writing because I was like, oh, people my age kind of do this. Uh, but I wasn't very good at writing, so I didn't pursue it very much. Uh, but then when I found mangas and comics, I found that there's more ways to tell stories than just writing. What is it like having so many siblings and being homeschooled? Ah, uh, it's a little chaotic at times and kind of noisy <laughs> uh, because we're all home like all the time. Uh, but I do enjoy having a lot of siblings and it's really fun because you kind of always have someone to talk to or hang out with or do something with. And I get along pretty well with all of my siblings so I kind of have someone to talk to a lot. And when it came to being homeschooled, I really enjoyed being homeschooled because I would only work on my schoolwork for like three hours and then I was done for the day. Uh, so I did quite enjoy that. <laughs> there were times I wished I went to normal school and it's not so much that I wanted to go to school. It's just that a lot of the girls at my church youth group all went to the same school. So they were all really close. Uh, so it was kind of hard for me to find my place where I fit in but I also have the socializing skills of a potato. <laughs> and I don't have poor socializing skills because I'm homeschooled. My brother was also homeschooled and he socializes like a normal person. I, uh, I'm just not good at socializing. <laughs> what art supplies are your favorite? Uh, the one I use the most are erasable colored pencils. I really like them and I use them a lot for sketching. So I guess they're my favorite. I don't really like sketching with graphite anymore. So. The erasable color pencils are really nice. What is the most awkward situation you have ever been in? Mmm, my entire life is awkward. <laughs> Favorite kind of tree? Um, I guess I would say weeping willow. Oh no, I always think they're really pretty and mysterious. We have a few in my area and I always really like looking at them. What's your most embarrassing moment? Um, I don't know if it's my most embarrassing moment, but it's one of the first ones that came to mind. Uh, so I was at a bonfire after youth group and uh, some of the youth group kids were holding it 
or was it one of the leaders? I don't remember. Uh, but basically, we were all playing a game that required hiding and running. And basically, we had to get back to the base, which was a tree next to the bonfire. Uh, so I was hiding, and when the coast was clear, I started running for the tree. And by the bonfire, there was a boy I sort of liked at the time <laughs> sitting there. And so I started running past the bonfire, and right there, I just trip over nothing, literally nothing. I just fell flat on my face and he totally saw it and just goes, nice. And I just got up as fast as I could and just went, thanks, and stood there awkwardly by the tree. <laughs> I remember being really embarrassed. <laughs> when did your channel first start to grow? When did it start taking off? And when you began, was it just a hobby or did you want it to become your job? My channel kind of felt like it always had kind of a steady little growth of subscribers. I remember after close to a year, I had about 100 subscribers. And then a little while after that, I hit 1,000 subscribers, maybe close to another year or like eight months or something. It really started taking off when I started posting every week in my last semester of college. Uh, so that was about four years ago, I think. When I first started, it was supposed to be a hobby. I thought it was unrealistic for a, it to be my job, uh, but here we are. <laughs> it's kind of crazy how much this channel has grown. How does it feel to know you've made an impact on 500,000 people in this world? It's crazy to think that so many people have watched my videos and have been inspired by them or that they have helped them in some way. It always makes me really happy when people say that my videos make them smile or bring them comfort in some kind of way. I'm really glad I have all of you in my life and you have all brought me so much joy. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so those are all the questions for this video. Thank you all so much for everyone who asked questions. Oh, and here's the chibi me along with some information about myself. I drew myself in what I call my grandma sweater along with my high-waisted jeans. I often wear this. I did add a collar to my grandma sweater. It doesn't have a collar, but I wish it had one. <laughs> also, I want to give a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon, including Purple Jesse, Setsujin, Rosekip21, Tomfish, Eduardo, Rachel, Twinvani, Tamalam, Artist Ever After, Robert, Andre, Aaron, Patrick, Panda Bear, Luzeal, and Miles to Go. Those are 89, Hollow Studio, Lu6562, Trash Oracle, Fairy Dawn Gray, Rogelio, Katie, Kavochi, Bela, and Terry. Thank you so much for being a patron and for helping support this channel. Uh, so anyways, that's all for this video. Thank you again so much for 500,000 subscribers. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!